Board of Supervisors. Because the, the number one issue is to ensure that medical insurance is there for our retirees. That's our number one concern. I agree. So it's you know we have to we have to have this meetings like next week just to see where we're going to go. And you're going to need a replacement for me because I'm retired. So that's that's true. I'm going to ask one question just for people like myself that are late in this process. Could someone and I, I can't hear very well either. I guess I'm getting old. But could somebody in few words and plain language say what the issue is? Cost. Pardon me? Cost. But cost to who? To the board and to you. That's right. And so that, that, that are, that's where the, the retirees, there's quite a few of us, really need to be involved. And is there any way that we can participate directly in any of these subcommittee meetings so that we can at least can talk among ourselves and find out what's going on? Well, Irene, my, Irene Mag used to come to all the meetings to be the voice for the retirees. Yeah, but she's not able to, I guess, because of health reasons. I'm not really sure exactly why she's not doing that. Uh, I have a question about that specifically. She said that you, I've been trying to do the brain drain with Irene because she's an amazing woman with a lot of information. And she said that the board had appointed her to be the liaison with the retirees to that board to your subcommittee and with her and then she resigned so we really haven't Bob Gandy has volunteered but I don't know what his standing is do we need to have somebody appointed by the Board of Supervisors or can we just appoint ourselves could you take an ad hoc member who had no voting rights but just there to share information and receive information I assume that it's not privileged I've heard something talk about deciding who the information can be made available to. Who's the, is there some prohibition with who's the sharing that information? The, the problem being, um, and that for how long, Bob, we haven't had a, a health committee meeting. We've had right? one health committee meeting. And that's year. the one that Irene used to go to. Sorry, that's been Correct. my biggest complaint. Correct. And the biggest and the biggest problem behind that was HR. Maybe two. So <laughs> the, that's a hurdle that we're trying to get over. There, there is, uh, take it from me, as your representative you know, to this board. Yeah. I fully intend to disclose to you everything I know uh, at your meetings about any possible current and future changes to your benefits. Um, you'll be the first to know. Thank you. Whether you have an ad hoc uh, member there, uh, a voting member or a non-voting member there, uh, I'll report that to you. Um, quite, quite frankly, that's why Dennis is here. Should be here. However, our meetings are every other month. You know, the horse could be out of the barn and down the road before we get any information. That, that, that's been, that's been the problem, though. Yeah. Um, that's been the frustration I know. at this I moment here, yeah. is that we'd, we'd like to be able to, to take this issue and discuss the pros and cons about possible modifications to the benefits and the cost of, of those benefits to to you, actually to, to the board, uh, since they're the first line of defense in providing that benefit, you know, then to the county and, and to you. It's probably it's probably the board to you as into the county because the county ends up being the deep pockets on this. Um, so yeah, it does impact you and you have a right to know. Um, but it would be nice to also have the right to have some input, or maybe we have ideas sure. of how to share that experience. I mean, I'm under, I'm under yeah, and please share that with I'm in a, I'm in yeah. a half a burden, so I'd rather have a voice in what that burden is than to be told, well, now you, you know. <laughs> Again, last year, at this, yes, at this time last year, there was a lot of, there was a lot of concern, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of speculation being tossed around in the hand, and we put that issue to bed because we didn't know and it was unfair to the retirees to, to to push that issue without having done the homework and the discussion and the due diligence and, and i and, and i and i won't support doing it any other way than doing it right so the yeah, board i think took an action yesterday that uh, is going to help resolve some of this and there's going to be Kind of a, an ad hoc group. There will be two members to start with. 
there would meet uh, a fairly regular coffee a day type of meeting with Chairman Dennis, where they would sit down and have a, a conduit. What you need is the information to come from the board side to this side, and we need to be able to have an influence on the people that represent us. And so I think Dennis would agree, and I think Tim would agree, that uh, Pete Holmstad and myself, Butch Campbell, would be meeting with them at least once a month, somewhere in the middle of the month, so that we could know in advance what's going on, and you would know in advance what generally our, our concerns might be. And that's all we really ask to be, so that both sides can be fully aware of it. Well, I think it's, it would be good to have retiring members, um, maybe even on a rotating basis, decide among yourself, but come to these meetings. I mean, really come to these meetings is participating. Well, I, I appreciate that, but it's kind of awkward. I've been in the, the business long enough to understand it. You, you come into a, a, a formal meeting, and then I want to raise my hand and say something. That's not an appropriate procedure, not unless it's set up as a workshop. Maybe what you want to consider, for, perhaps, is a workshop, a workshop between your board and the retirees, where that we can all share information back. And forth. I think I think that's a good idea. Coming up with a workshop format every so often is a, a great idea. That we that it has to be a, a format where that our president has ever reason to stand up and talk as mm -hmm. your chairman would have to stand up and talk. But it doesn't mean that just attending the meetings is the only method of communication. But it's a regular one. Yeah, it's absolutely. a it's a noticed meeting. You you can make sure you get the agenda and have folks here. I think I think that that's good. But to go back to, to what some things that Dennis said and Tim, uh, lots of frustration on all sides, but the goal was really, really, um, as I think Tim Pierce said, is it's to keep this, this system in place and, and be as good of a health care system as it can be for the long run. Um, I think that where we got to was that if the, if the retiree plan could mirror the health, uh, the employee's plan, that was sort of at one juncture, that was our goal. Now, it was never really, uh, I don't think, a, a, a solid idea that we were going to merge the two, because to merge retirees with the active employees would be a meet and confer item out of, uh, so you'd have to be going to the employee group. That wouldn't be allowed to happen without a whole lot of discussions that would get complicated very quickly. So the idea was we were trying to create a mirror of that plan that would follow the employee into retirement. I think that where it sort of began to go sideways is when we got the basic information from Mercer, there was going to be some cost savings, but it, it appeared to be rather negligible. So to decrease the benefits, if you will, confuse retirees, make changes that didn't necessarily meet with a large cost savings that could be justified, we started to decide that we would set that aside. It didn't seem like uh, a prudent thing to be doing, to talk to retirees about having to pay a share and then change the benefits at the same time and have them be less, benef less benefits overall, really. So I think we